Good afternoon or good morning, folks. My name's Joe Furla, and I'll be leading today's Cloud Commander Bootcamp. We'll go ahead and get started with a quick introduction. Again, my name's Joe Furla. Been here for Enable uh, for about six years. Began work in the channel sales space and then was given the opportunity uh, to move to the sales engineer position. From sales engineer, um, I was, again, given another opportunity at Enable where I helped create the partner success management team, uh, being one of the first six uh, that were in that particular role. Sat there for a number of years um, before given the, the chance to become the Insight and Mac head nerd, um, which quickly evolved into operational efficiency, cloud commander, MSP manager, take control, mail assure, all of those auxiliary tools. Um, so quite happy to be here today. If you folks do have any questions after today's session, or you do want to ask any follow-up questions or connect with me, um, you've got my contact information underneath the, the headshot there. You can get me on email, joseph.furla at enable.com. You can find me on Reddit. Um, as Hedner Joe, and then you can catch me on LinkedIn as Joe Furla. We're gonna have five sections that we're going to go through today. We're gonna set up an onboard clients. We are going to look at user management, which includes users themselves and licensing, as well as groups and roles. We'll take a look at our Intune management, which concludes our Intune devices, as well as configuration profiles and compliance policies. We'll go into some Azure resource management and then dig into the reporting of the tool. We'll start with onboarding. All right, so getting started with Cloud Commander, before we even look at signing up for a trial, we're going to look at the creation of a service account inside your partner center. For the, so for those who may not be familiar with, with this, we do want a service account inside your partner center to be the primary account on the tool. We're doing this because we want that service account to manage the GDAP relations that will be created between, of course, Cloud Commander and your partner center, as well as Cloud Command or your partner center and your client. And that service account is going to manage those. Upon creating the service account, we've got three things we need to remember. First off, we need global admin privileges. Second off, we need to have the admin as uh, the admin as agent, where the uh, service account can manage all of your users, and then also that service account has to have MM MFA enforced. So please do be aware of that. Okay. The tool does have Power Automate in it as well, and you have that connector available. So typically what we recommend is the premium Power Automate license that is required to be used with the tool. The service account is the one that controls that particular tool as well, because not every user needs to have access to that Power Automate instance to utilize the function of Power Automate within the tool, because we can look at using the event-based flows inside uh, uh, Power Automate. Okay, we'll go over quickly some authenticating in Cloud Commander. We will look at how we're going to approve our GDAP uh, inside the tool, and then we'll look at some of our client. So we'll get into a quick little demo. Upon initial login to Cloud Commander, we're always going to see the users page. So once you've created that service account, you've signed up for the trial, you've logged in for the first time utilizing that service account, okay, we're going to see a blank screen. We'll come to the Microsoft Cloud Access section. And what you folks are going to see is a nice big blue button that says Start Setup here. Of course, mine's going to populate with my clients because I have already gone through the authentication process. But what you guys will see is Start Setup. You'll go in, you'll verify that you are the service account, enter MFA if necessary. You'll then approve the creation of the, the, or approve the permissions to be able to create the GDAP connections and the like for the tool. Please do not click the super enticing checkbox that says authenticate on behalf of your organization. We authenticate just on behalf of that service account. From there within the wizard, you can look at onboarding clientele, or you can just skip through the rest of the wizard as you would need. 
Once you're through with that wizard, we're going to get to a screen that looks like this, where if necessary, we have the ability to re-authenticate and de-authenticate the sandbox or the uh, service account itself. And then we'll have the ability to look at managing our clientele. So we can come in here where we see enabled. We'll do a quick double check and we can move our clientele to enable or disabled as necessary. So here we'll pump in, we'll enable our client. We'll see Cloud Commander update for us moving from not configured to either awaiting Microsoft or needs approval. Once we get to that needs approval state, which we see right here or right here, we'll copy this approval link. This is the approval link that typically would go to the admin of that particular tenant to approve the GDAP settings and permissions for, again, Cloud Commander. However, we're going to give you the ability to kind of intercept that so that you can take this link and, and authenticate on behalf of your end users utilizing an account uh, or utilizing an admin account at their tenant level. That being said as well, you can also look at going in and pre-setting up all of the proper uh, permissions where they have pretty much full permissions, but either way you'd like to go about this, okay, you have the ability to do so. Let's turn them back to disabled. Okay, once we have given approval, we're going to enter into the awaiting Microsoft state where we are looking at generating the proper GDAP connections as well as making sure all the proper permissions are set. And from there, we're gonna enter into one of two states. If you are a direct CSP and you purchase directly from Microsoft, you are more often than not going to see the approved state that we see right here. Okay. This approved state tells us that we have full access into our client health. If as a direct CSP, you see an issues found status, that's typically telling us that that clientele does not have, say, Azure licensing, more often than not. For indirect CSPs, where we're purchasing through a reseller like Pax8 or any of the other numerous resellers out there, Right? We're going to more often than not see the issues found state, which we see right here. This is because when we work with a reseller, they don't have to give us the proper permissions for Cloud Commander to function within their Azure licensing. It's not because they don't have or want to give us those permissions. It's because they don't have to give us those permissions. So if we come in and we click the review limitations section or a denotation, we'll find that we have a link to an article, information in this article, and we'll provide you with the steps to give yourself the proper admin privileges to be able to manage the Azure inside Cloud Commander. So we come in, we're gonna see two ways we can go about this. Okay, as we're going to have to do this for each of our organizations or tenants or customers, however we'd like to think about them, we've got the step-by-step -step process with the two small pieces of PowerShell here, where we're going to go in and get the, first off, the object ID of the admin agents group. And then secondly, we're gonna go using that object ID, apply the proper permissions to that particular user or to that particular group as well. We also, have the ability to run this in one large PowerShell script in one single step. I will openly admit I have not tested the large piece of PowerShell yet that does everything all at once, primarily because I tend to be a little bit paranoid about PowerShell and my Microsoft environments, and I like having a little bit more granular control to make sure that everything's working well. Okay, I have seen the large PowerShell scripts succeed and run well, it's just not been my preferred method. So take that as you will and look at utilizing these scripts to give yourself the proper permissions so that as an indirect, again, indirect CSP, we can look at managing our tools. Okay. Once we've come in and we've approved our clientele, okay, either leaving them at issues found because they don't have an Azure tenant or Azure subscription, going through the script in the indirect options or in the approved status, typically what we see in our direct CSP relationships, 
okay? We'll be able to get functionality out of the tool. The issues found state here, again, for our indirect CSPs, will still give you full user and Intune control. So if that client doesn't have Azure, we're still gonna pick up that you don't have those permissions, but that's okay, just leave it there. <laughs> From there, we'll be able to see two things happen. We'll be able to see our clientele pump into Cloud Commander here, as well as your tenant. You'll get full management of your users or full capabilities of your users here, end users, of course, for your individual organization there's not going to be much management though there will be some good reporting because of course we can't take action on your tenant the partner center through this tool and that is by design what you'll see is as you select one of the new clients within the tool and we're just going to go ahead and select a bunch for us here to take a look at we'll see our user screen start to populate from there we're going to have a couple sections of management within the tool. The first section of management is going, going to be user management, where we can perform our tier one type management items, right? The basics, reset password, reset multi-factor authentication, right? We can look at assigning licenses, control groups and roles for our users. And this includes your users at that particular point, both inside Cloud Commander, as well as Entra ID roles, and then there will be a good amount of automation within the tool as well to look at controlling our users. Okay, That automation is going to be done in singular one-off items through the Cloud Commander portal. However, if we're looking at performing a large workflow item, like say onboarding, we're going to utilize the Power Automate connector for that particular piece of automation. Now, for the Power Automate connector piece of this, you'll have to cut me a little bit of slack. Okay, the Power Automate connector hit the dashboard legitimately last week, and I don't personally, or we don't have a account that I have access to that's been connected to a Cloud Commander account. Okay, there's a couple reasons we see that. As I'm sure you can understand, it's hard for me to get access to a partner center, right? Because I don't own a business. Also, I don't have all of those fake businesses behind me. Also, it's been something where we're looking at getting funding from Enable as well. And that's been very difficult, okay? Because, well, funding from a business is always hard. So we'll be a little bit light on the Power Automate section today, but we will go through it. All right, so starting off with the basics for our users, okay? Everything for our users that's going to be at the basic level, we can access either through the little checkbox here, where I'll get the ability to delete a user, revoke sessions, reset multi-factor authentications, passwords, edit that particular user, or if I don't want to use the checkbox, I can use my dropdown here to get access to those actions. You do also have the ability to add a new user to an organization of your choosing, as you would like, where, if appropriate, we can choose synchronization type. It's Skywalker I have that set up as. Sorry. To look at user synchronization type, we do work with hybrid accounts. So you can choose cloud or on-premise and cloud to look at bringing those new users into our managed environments. To create the new user, you enter in the nice little user details, quick, simple, nitty gritty, okay, very similar to what we would see inside Microsoft. However, we come with the one benefit I do like here is that I can quickly add management or managers to my users, which is quite nice. Okay, once we create that new user inside, say, Power Automate, using that premium Power Automate license and the connection, we can say then kick off an onboarding workflow. Okay. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second. I promise I'll get to Power Automate. From here, we're going to find a little bit more granular user control by clicking the hyperlink to the user themselves. Here we'll be given a summary with, again, our five quick hit easy items, delete and edit, reset password, revoke session, reset all multi-factor authentication. Okay. We'll also be able to see authentication methods for their users and their system authentication and status and preference and their user authentication preference. Ah, 
Fun fact, so or good question. So creating a user, do we have to get the licensing before we create the user? I would highly recommend it because part of what we're going to be looking at doing within our onboarding Power Automate workflow, which can be downloaded from Enable inside our help guide. So let's pause here real quick and let's take a look at this. So inside Power Automate, okay, we'll go through how to set up the connector inside Power Automate as you would need from the connection section or while connecting or world or bleh, sorry english got hard there folks or we'll show you how to connect while running a flow okay we'll show you how to import templates as necessary and in the use powershell or in the use cloud commander section we do have the ability to download our onboarding template this gives us the ability to while using power automate assign that licensing so if I'm going to be using this tool in a fashion where I am looking at creating a scalable, repeatable process that automates as much of my onboarding as I can, I'm going to want to have that license before I add the user. Because what's going to happen is the Power Automate tool is going to recognize that event of onboarding a new user and go through the appropriate workflow for the appropriate client associated with that particular workflow okay this also comes into enter id groups comes into a good amount of tooling here okay so when we do that okay i tend to live there now that being said we can also manually add licenses retroactively to adding a new user Okay, so they could be, for all intents and purposes, a li licenseless user, kind of like your service account is, right? And wait for you to assign the appropriate licensing to them, where I can come to assign license, select any of my available licensing for that particular user from their organization. Once, of course, Microsoft decides to communicate to me here, configure any services that may be necessary, confirm the choices that I made, and quickly add that licensing. To kind of add this as well, I can come and select a existing license, configure additional services as necessary, or unassign those licenses directly from the dashboard as well. Let me see if I can adjust that. Folks, um, I had somebody come in, say that the computer audio or that my audio was coming in very low. Is that a problem on your guys' end as well? Or is this an individual instance here? Okay, yeah, I've got a good amount of folks saying it's looking like it's coming in fine. So if I'm coming in low, um, I will admit I'm on a lav mic running through a camera and a physical mixer. Uh, my audio is coming in at about 75% on my side. Um, turning it up any higher than that, I do tend to start to get a good amount of feedback. Turning the sensitivity on the mic, I do tend to get my, like my air conditioning unit with a bunch of white noise. So I think that might be an individual instance. My apologies there. All right, so licensing, okay? We're pretty flexible, okay? Controlling our users individually, mind you, We've also got the groups and roles section here. Now I can come in to look at add, adding memberships to my pre-existing groups as I would need. And I can look at removing memberships for groups as I would need. Now we will note here that we're gonna see a couple group types. We've got the Microsoft 365. We've also got platform groups. Okay, so let me quickly add my tenant to this and we'll come into the admin folks here, right? And we'll see our group memberships. Let's add them to CC admin real quick. Okay, and we'll see platform user. We'll also see security as an option within these groups. This is gonna be a one-to-one, -one, well, one to many, one user to one group. Okay, we're going to see very similarly underneath roles, while we have the ability to get a little bit more global with our role assignment here, we still want to focus on this particular section being a one-to-one. -one. 
okay? When we see platform roles, all of the assignments that we will be able to add here are individual read, write, or administrator privileges for the platform itself. This is for Cloud Commander. This is where our technicians are going to live. This is where our license admins, our sales team, maybe, right? And our engineers and administrators are going to live. Okay? Except the Microsoft Entra roles, exactly what it sounds. These are our Entra items. These are the roles that we are looking at assigning within Entra themselves. So when we come, and let's say I just want to give administrator privilege within the portal here, you'll note I am able to select multiple users or additional groups to add this particular role to as I would need. I personally tend to shy away from this, okay, because we have the groups and the roles section of the dashboard specifically where we look at a much larger global view. But pick your poison. You'll note that the groups and the users are only from that particular organization because the scope available for permissions is going to be the scope available to that particular user within your partner center. So your technicians, because they are at the partner center level, will see all of your organizations. Your individual end users are typically only going to see their organization unless you're working with a much more complicated setup where they have access to two organizations. We'll select our scope, review our selection, and click confirm to assign those appropriate privileges. The last thing we'll have underneath the individual users is going to be our automate section. The automate section is the single use item based off of the Power Automate connector, okay? So Power Automate gets our workflows. They get our multi-step scalable and repeatable pieces of automation designed to be highly repeatable. Okay, automate are going to be our one-off requests, right? Or our simple single step requests that don't need to be triggered off of an event. Add new user, add license, right? We probably want that empower automate to make it a little bit more scalable and repeatable, right? Set my maximum receive size for my mailbox because something happened and I'm not receiving any mail over, you know, like a bag or something like that, right? We can do that in here. So to run a command block, we'll select that individual block. We'll come to add command job and we're going to see one to three steps here, okay? We'll see a single step for our items that are going to be get commands pretty much, get shared mailboxes. All right, we're pulling the shared mailboxes for that particular client that we're running, right? Or, well, the user that we're running, right? Here, I've got two steps because I have my input to pull, right? I'd see three steps in, say, something like add user to shared mailbox. Step number one, get all the shared mailboxes at that organization. Step number two, select the shared mailbox you'd like to give that user access to. Step three, okay, we're going to see our summary, okay? Once we see our summary, we can go ahead, we can click confirm, and we will see the nice blue box in the top corner telling us that that command block is going to be running. Okay, we'll come in, we'll click done, and we can continue our work as necessary. Now, inside the individual user, we will see command logs, okay? Command logs are going to tell us what has been done by who, when, where, and how for that particular user. Now, in this particular case, I'm always going to fail the set mailbox max receive size because, well, I removed all licensing from that user. But in the event that that particular piece could run, you can come and click on that piece of automation and see any output. We'll give you any errors that we may need. And we'll delve a little bit more into the command logs to see a little bit more granularity there when we get to our uh, assets section. But continuing with user management, we've got groups, 
Groups give us the ability to interact with groups from any of the organizations that we have selected inside our dropdown. We'll see group type, organization, any email um, items that may be associated with that particular group, and we'll get some basic actions of manage or delete the group right from the uh, quick little hit here. Okay. You can add new groups as necessary. Adding a new group is very simple. You're pretty much going to name it, describe it, and look at confirming that. So as we come in, right, group type, Microsoft 365 platform or security, click next, select an organization to apply this to, click your group details, and create that particular group. Now, when we look at managing those groups themselves, we'll come in and we'll click the hyperlink itself or use the little edit group or manage group options that we saw. This will give us the ability to assign members from the organization that that group is allowed to be dealing with or working with, and we'll be given the ability to add roles to this group. We'll see a very similar add assignments section okay, where I can come in, look at selecting the individual roles that I would be looking at, and here is where now I'm going to be dealing with this at a little bit more global of a level, giving or assigning roles and permissions to groups associated with an organization or all of my users associated with that particular organization. We'll again get scope where we select what organizations this particular group can work with and our confirmation. And we're able to remove those roles as necessary. Okay, and we'll see Again, enter roles here if we would like to add those two groups once it decides to load for me. Okay, but we'll see a nice quick hit list like this with the add assignments. Underneath user permissions is where we're going to look at starting at the role rather than the group management section. Okay, where I can come in, select an appropriate role to work with, come to add assignment, select the organization that I would like to add that assignment to, see my list of users and groups. So here we'll come with my admin groups, select my scope. So now seeing that I'm working from my tenant, I can increase my scope to say every end user organization within the dashboard. Okay, removing myself, or I can be very granular with where I'm assigning these particular roles. We'll click next for confirmation and we'll add that particular role. Inside the summary section of our particular roles, you will get a brief description as well as a very granularly listed chart that will show you all permissions for the tool or for, for that particular role. Real good question come in. The Power Automate premium license, is it needed only at the CSP tenant or for each client? CSP tenant. Okay, so typically I attach it to either my primary admin at the partner center level, right, the upper level, or I attach it to the uh, cloud service account. All right, Intune management. Inside Intune management, we're going to give you your basic device management, okay, reporting on that particular device as well. Plus, we'll take a look at some compliancy items. We'll be able to man manage the out-of-the-box Microsoft configuration profiles and the out-of-the-box Microsoft compliance policies, though I don't know why we have that plural. It's really just the Windows 10 and 11 compliance policy. When we look at adjusting and customizing those particular settings and those particular policies, we'll function out of the Power Automate tool because it gives us more flexibility than could be allowed in this particular GUI. And we're still going to look at that being event-based, right? Either running on a schedule, right? Running when a device is added, that kind of deal, okay? So coming into Intune, underneath assets, we will see devices and applications. This is where we're gonna get a list of our devices and applications, a quick hit of compliant or not compliant as we need to see at a very much a glance. We'll be able for our Intune devices to refresh, sync, and reboot with the box here. And we'll be able to send our nice little kind of Intune commands from our three vertical dot menu, right? Refresh, sync the device, 
refreshes in the dashboard sync to sync it with Intune, reboot, remote lock, rename, change primary user, restore, or wipe the device as necessary. Clicking in to an Intune device, we'll show you some base details on that particular device, any recent actions that may have been taken on that device, typically through the configuration and compliance items, some base hardware details, application details, assigned policies, and then we're going to see some command logs. And again, we'll get into command logs, I promise, when we get to reporting a little bit more in detail. For our cloud PC items, we get the ability to refresh, reboot, rename, and reprovision the device as necessary. And clicking in, we'll get our device details as well as our command logs as needed. Configuration profiles gives us the list from Microsoft coming in selecting a particular profile to apply will give us a quick hit at the top clicking into the profile itself you will give us our command log here when we kick into the command log we saw a completed status so that'll give us who done it but more importantly inside the output we will see the appropriate outputs pulled either from powershell that's run or from the kind of wizard itself so a much better a view of what we've seen compared to those failed ones. So coming in, we'll click apply profile. We're going to select the organizations we would like to run this particular profile against. So here I'll have my eight clientele selected. We'll get a brief overview of can you do what you're trying to do? And if you cannot, you'll see a brief reason that you're going to see this failed based off of permissions, or if it is your own organization, because you just can't, right? Remember, we're not managing your organization through this tool. We'd like your internal IT department to handle that. We'll come into the select input where we can look at entering in our values or variables as needed. More importantly, look at assigning this to either all users or all devices as necessary. And we'll come to our summary. Who are we doing it to? What are we setting? And click and confirm will run that particular template against the organizations that you have selected. Our compliance policies item will do very much the same thing. Clicking into the compliance policy shows us our command log. Selecting the apply policy section will bring us into who are we going to do this to? Can we do this to those organizations? And selecting our inputs. Compliance policy, of course, is going to be more along the lines of device health items, properties, configuration management, password security, encryption services, and the like. All right, next up, we're going to have our Azure resources. Okay, here we're going to see some basic overview of our resources. We'll pull in your Azure alerts from all of your tenants into one single easy to manage pane of glass, right? We'll be able to see our resources at a high level everything associated with Azure. We'll see our Azure VMs as well, okay? So, so, all right. So, coming in underneath dashboards, the first place we'll sit is Azure dashboards. We'll see our resources by health status, available, un unknown, degraded, unavailable. We'll see our virtual machines by power state, right, running, starting, stopped, deallocated, unknown, and we'll see our alerts by severity, right? Of course, looking primarily for critical and warnings here, of course, we'll also see some error items. Inside this main overview, we'll see a nice little audit log, who's done what, where, and alerting, okay? What alerts have we found? We'll drill from the overview into a more granular view as you would need, hopping in between our individual dashboards with the click of a button okay, or a click of a status to be quite honest okay the azure alerts section here okay drills us into our alerts in a little bit more granular of a fashion please note that inside this section while i don't have any alerts we're going to provide you a good amount of information when it was fired what's the severity a brief description resources affected all of these individual columns, of course, are able to be sorted and filtered through as you would need. The Azure Resources section is going to list everything from our VMs 
to our network security groups, interfaces, storage disks, public IP address items, right? Just a huge amount within our resource type, okay? We'll see who they're associated with, resource group names, which subscription, and their location. Okay, there we go, we triggered it. All right, VMs will give us some additional information here, though it's not wanting to pop out quite the whole way. That's okay, we'll see that in another section, All right? And if we are working on a device that does have available actions, we'll see it here. Drilling into our VMs themselves, we'll have the ability to select our VMs and here's what that full pop-out should look like. I'm just impatient and wasn't waiting for it to go the whole way. Where we're going to see our resource properties, we will see our storage, and we will see our infrastructure, okay? Selecting that VM, gives us the ability to start, restart, deallocate, or stop. And clicking the hyperlink for that particular VM allows us to go in to see items like dependencies, networking items, basic resource details, and some base monitors on our devices as well. Okay, CPU utilization, credits, and memory. So some nice functionality. Okay, with reporting when in, within the tool, we do have a reasonably large amount of flexible reporting. We can look at exporting almost any screen that comes in a table from our command logs to our devices, to our resources, to our VMs. Okay, Just a large amount of information that you can pull quite granularly across the tool. We also have the ability to look at exporting individual command logs like we saw from the user, the VMs, the configuration and compliance items, or a global report. We've got a couple Power BI reports within the tool that we can look at utilizing. And we've got some authentication method items that we can look at using, as well as some license reporting, as well as management, okay? But we're gonna get to the license management at the end. So our quick demo. Starting off, we're gonna come underneath authentication methods. Underneath authentication methods, we're gonna be able to pull all of the system authentication, or, or all of the, um, system authentication statuses for all of your organizations that you have selected in the dropdown. If appropriate, we'll be able to show you system and user authentication preferences. From here, you will have the ability to look at revoking sessions or resetting multi-factor authentications. And we're also going to have the ability to export either all of the data in this particular uh, dash or selected rows to Excel as we would need. And we'll be given the ability to look at controlling our columns as necessary. You'll note in here, right now we're one-to-one. -one. one user to one revoke session and reset multi-factor authentication preferences. We are looking into bringing this to one-to-many, though that tends to be a little bit dangerous of a command to give. So we're kind of weighing the Man, if I give somebody one misclick here, that's pretty heavy. So keep an eye out. I'm on the boat. I'd like to keep this one-to-one, -one, but I tend to be pretty terrified of accidentally resetting multi-factor authentication for all my users. Now, in the report section, we'll get our global command log. Our global command log is going to be everything that's done within the tool. Please note, if you need to pull information that's been done within the tool out of the command log down to the click level, while we are not that granular right now, it is tracked. So if you've got to get excessively granular with who's done what within the tool, contact us. Dev can go in and we can pull more information if you need to be that granular. Okay. Inside the command log, any of the hyperlinks will allow you to look at what are the successes or failures or outputs of your individual scripts as you may need, filter as you may need, and then you can come in and look at exporting. So the general rule of thumb within this tool is if you see a chart like this, it can be exported to Excel or CSV. We will have our Microsoft Secure Score reporting in here, one of our Power BI reports. 
This report does refresh on a 24-hour basis. So the first time you give permissions that allow the running of this report to your users, please be aware, it's gonna take 24 hours for us to run that first command so that the report will populate properly. You can have a global or individual uh, organization view as you would like. At the present moment, there is not an overall export of our reports. However, of course, you can look at utilizing all of the nice little Power BI tools you may need. So coming in and in the corner of your widgets, you'll be able to find your more items. Where is it? And it can be a little bit finicky to get to, but there are exports in there. The second Power BI report that we're going to have is going to be Microsoft Available Licensing. This is where we're going to pause for a second and we are going to discuss the difference inside the tool for indirect and direct CSPs. Indirect CSPs can manage licensing within the tool. They cannot procure licensing because of the reseller relationship. Okay. So to procure licensing, you'll need to go through your reseller, whomever you're using now, the PACs eight, PAC 8s of the world, right? But you can still see our available licensing filtered by organization as well as product. Okay. We'll show you some trend history, just an overall nice Power BI report that we can have to run at a glance. Now, our direct CSP, CSPs will be given the subscription section. Because direct CSPs, those that are purchasing directly from Microsoft, are able to manage subscriptions and procure licenses and new subscriptions within the tool. And I can export here to report on my licensing if necessary. Coming in to create a new subscription, we'll select an organization, select a subscription type as you would need, okay? Select an individual offer or product as necessary. So here, interact with the SKU items as you may need, quantity, if necessary, you will see term, monthly, annually, three-year renewal, okay. and then we'll come in to save and create that licensing. For our current licensing, for our direct, CS, direct CSPs, come in, select the licensing, and we'll be able to edit the subscription as necessary and if appropriate manage renewal and last piece of reporting that's going to be in here is going to be our azure management log all right because my azure environment is a little bit light right now there's not much in here but this is going to function very much as well your audit log for azure you'll be able to control your columns you'll be able to export as necessary that is cloud commander in a nutshell the only item that we haven't hit yet is going to be the user settings. We saved this till the end because this is primarily for folks that are managing hybrid environments. And be, one thing to note, because we make our changes utilizing Cloud Commander at the physical device level, we are able to manage almost every hybrid style of account in the Microsoft book. To manage your hybrid accounts, come in, automation account name, subscription ID, resource group name, hybrid worker group name. Okay. And you'll be able to manage those cloud users in the same fashion uh, as you would our cloud only users. All right, that brings us to a Q&A session. If you guys have any lingering questions to get out of the way, um, please do. While we are looking at getting our questions into the questions pane, we're gonna hit our poll. Ah, really good question coming in here. What is pricing for Cloud Commander? Pricing right now, because we are a very new tool and we are still truly hammering out pricing, everything I've heard from pricing has come from the preview stage, okay? I'm not in sales, I don't handle contracts as a head nerd, uh, my apologies there. So what I would recommend is if you do need pricing on Cloud Commander, I know at the present moment it is per organization, okay? Please reach out to your PSM. 
If you do not know who your PSM is, please do let me know via email and I'll connect you with them to get pricing. Okay, so when it comes to Azure virtual desktops, we're not going to say monitor them, but we are able to report on them as resources and then interact with them as need. So if you're looking at purchasing, buying licenses from our partner, right? So say for instance, I'm assuming that means our reseller, right? That's not going to be supported within the tool. The only way to procure licensing within the tool is to be a direct CSP. As a direct CSP, you can allow your end users license management. Inside the tool itself, we do have a pre-built, here we'll see CC license admins. If you come to the roles here, Okay. While there are a whole lot of roles because they're done by individual organization to apply granularity, if you come in and select one of your end users, the CC admins group will tell you what we want to pretty much be looking at to give your end users access. So you'll have to create the group itself, but these five particular roles are what you're going to want to be giving the necessary end users the ability to procure their own subscriptions as they would like okay you can start limiting here by role as well you know look at subscription management being removed they cannot procure their licensing or interact with their subscriptions but you can give them license admin role where they can manage the subscriptions inside the tool itself assign and unassign add configure services as the like and okay. again that licensing sorry I was a little bit vague on it. It is pure or it is by organization per client. And, all right, keep the questions coming. This tool has gone GA. We are no longer in the preview phase. I mentioned the preview phase there because that was where I've been primarily working with Cloud Commander in the onboarding and management style role for our preview clientele. And that's where I've heard pricing. Um, I've been out over the past couple uh, days at conferences where when we went GA and did discuss licensing with sales and pricing, I just didn't hit that. Um, but as a head nerd, I typically do tend to shy away from pricing because there's just a lot that can be done, especially in Cloud Commander with volume and committed deals and the like that I just, I, I don't have the ability for, you know, every enable product to keep up with all of, all of that. So my apologies. Right now, Cloud Commander is not brandable as far as I've seen. That is a very common request. It is something that we have heard. Do not get us wrong. But right now it's not brandable all right folks we are nearing the top of the hour uh, so if you do have any other questions let's get them in if you have a little bit more in depth of a question that you think would require a conversation um, feel free to shoot me an email joseph.ferla that's f-e-r-l-a at enable.com and i'll be more than uh, more than happy to answer any questions you may have about the tool um, if i am unable to do so i can always look at depending on what region you're in hooking you up with uh, yori or carlito um, our cloud commander specialists on the sales side all right we are at the top of the hour um, i don't see any other questions coming in thank you so much for attending today folks um it was a pleasure if you again have any lingering questions uh you can shoot me an email also please note you can find me on linkedin or reddit we'll talk to you folks later and uh, we'll see you in any subsequent boot camps or office hours Please note there is a cloud and tools office hours specifically for Cloud Commander if you would like to join. Well, Cloud Commander, MSP Manager, MailAssure, Take Control, you know, our, our, our cloud tools. We'll talk to you later. Bye.